Do you or your family use the ice at your local arena? Have you received a team schedule and thought, we're playing at what time where? For those deep in the ice culture and activities around Ennismore and Selwyn Broadley, you're likely aware of the issues of ice time availability, also known as ice allocation. In short, we don't have enough time for different user groups to share the ice in a fair and responsible manner across age groups and abilities. It's a problem that's only going to get worse, with few solutions in the short, medium, and long term. For those not well aware, welcome to this contentious issue. It's likely impacting your life in one way or another. Let's jump in. Selwyn Township has two indoor maintained ice rinks, one in Lakefield and one in Ennismore. These facilities are older and both have had recent but different updates in different capacities. Between the two arenas, we have 20 user groups and each is composed of smaller groups or teams with many participants. User groups are groups or organizations that use the ice for their activities. Of these groups, participants, coaches, parents, and volunteers have made our ice community what it is. In Ennismore, the Sunday Men's League is turning 50. The minor hockey leagues for both boys and girls has been growing, drawing players from Peterborough and beyond because of our recognition and accomplishments. Our Optimus Club offers learn to skate programs, teaching the basics, and across all these efforts, we are a community growing together with deep investments in our ice culture. However, with so many groups and people participating, we've been running out of ice time and space to accommodate them all. In some regards, for short-term solutions, we have been getting innovated, having multiple teams participating on the ice at the same time and having it divided up into different sections. Asking groups to budge a half hour here or there, or user groups have been swapping or rotating times. For the most part, however, feathers are continuing to get rustled, and depending on who you talk to, this has been an issue for almost 30 years. I'm 32. So consider that this issue is correlating with a generational turnover. More young people are using the ice than before. And when you get into the weeds of the situation, you can see how many of the user groups all have a stake. They all bring in money to keep the rinks going and contribute to the culture and health of our community in many capacities. Some user groups, however, are arguing that others should be more accommodating. For example, we should be asking parents to have practice at 6 a.m. for six and 10 year olds, or right before school when arenas are 30 minutes from school or work. The most crucial time is right after school and in the evening, and therefore the cost of this ice time is higher. However, most groups are vying for that time. And honestly, who can blame them? We all would love to have a clear and consistent schedule each and every day with our recreational activities not conflicting with our work, school, or other schedules. So what's already been done about this? Between 2016 and 2020, we saw a number of these groups come forward to council or directly calling on councillors and township staff asking for help with the scheduling tensions. Finally, between 2020 and 2021, the council brought forward the idea of an ice allocation policy. An ice allocation policy in a, is a decision, first and foremost, made by a governing body such as our council to decide who gets to use the ice and when. However, in late 2021 and 2022, with all the continued unrest between the groups and the uncertainty of COVID and the 2022 election so close, Selwyn's Council gave user groups the benefit of the doubt and encouraged them one more year to try to sort out scheduling on their own. In short, the Council decided to leave the possibility of creating an ICE allocation policy for the next year and let the next Council, a fresh set of ideas and eyes, take this challenge on if user groups could not work it out on their own. I've chatted with a number of the user groups running activities in Ennismore, and I've looked across the proposed and later more concrete ice schedules. It's a mess. The tensions are growing every day. This will need careful consideration and no one is going to be happy because when it comes down to it, we need more ice locally in order to accommodate everybody. So why is this significant to voters? This issue is significant to all voters in many ways. First and foremost, you might be part of one of these user groups, and you're frustrated. You might even be part of more than one user group, and you're probably caught in the crossfire. Torn probably between wanting the best for your kids and having a great schedule for the family, but you're also not interested in giving up your prime adult skate time either. Second, ice rinks are a money pit for any municipality. 
As an asset, ice pads don't really make money or pay for themselves, except maybe the canteen portion. So when you pay a municipal tax bill, a good portion goes to keeping that asset in maintenance and supporting issues like bursting pipes, paying for staff and inflation. To put this in perspective, it's like owning a vehicle. The value of a car decreases over time and you'll never get back the original value unless you put more money into it and maintain it over time. That's kind of where we're sitting at now, but we don't have enough ice. Third, and connected to the second point, where municipalities only foot the bill for part of the maintenance or use of ice facilities, user groups have to make up the remaining portion in their user fees. In turn, the cost of being a member of these user groups is going up. Many hockey players and parents of hockey players will know that the cost has jumped dramatically. And that's just for signing up. That doesn't include equipment. Further, when there isn't enough ice time and it's fought for, those willing to pay a higher dollar will likely gain that ice time and others will have to take the crummier time slot or seek else ice time elsewhere. Finally, and again connected to the second and third point, you can kind of see how it's all interconnected. When user groups have to seek ice time elsewhere, the township loses money. The largest user group and a small minor hockey league is having to seek ice time outside our township. Right now, we have teams going to practice in Apsley and Duro. For perspective, for us in Ennismore, that's about 45 minutes away. A two-lane highway with poor visibility in the winter and lots of wildlife crossings. While some of us may say, it's not that far, I don't mind the drive and I want to support those communities, we also have to be conscious that gas prices are still high, a number of us are back to work in the office, meaning we're commuting most of the day, and winter driving is daunting no matter what time slot we have. Further, I've seen the initial invoices. We're spending close to $25,000 elsewhere that could be better spent in our community. So we're actually losing more money that could be funneled back into the community. For example, money that might be redistributed elsewhere in our municipal operating budget, say for road maintenance. I see a few ways forward, but each requires deep, critical thinking and engagement with all stakeholders at the table. And no one's going to be completely satisfied because we haven't moved on this issue sooner. We're all playing catch up. In the short term, we bring all the user groups to the table through a short consultation. I will push for these to occur in the spring and summer of 2023. However, I will need to have support across at least two other council members to get this on the agenda ASAP. Remember, a councillor is only one of a council. There has to be support from others to move ideas and efforts forward. We have to have a buy-in across the township. At this consultation, we can consider a concrete or rotating schedule by week, month, or even year, depending on how invested each group is in this idea. We will see groups still buying ice time outside our township, but this might become a shared cost and venture between those user groups, and this could potentially keep participation rates plateaued if inflation and other factors don't skew our local economy quickly. We might even be able to work with other townships for a partnership on ice time costs and times that work across all of our municipalities. If the tensions remain high and we can't figure this out, I foresee an ice allocation policy being put into place, possibly for a four to five year cycle. It can be revisited after maybe a year or even the next election cycle. It all depends on how we fare. This is unfortunately a trial and error approach because we have unique numbers in our user groups and we haven't moved quickly enough. However, such an approach can provide flexibility. Ice times can move around if there is agreement, but for the most part, the township will take the lead in deciding who uses the ice and when. For some, this may seem unfair and take the fun out of it, but we're already not having fun. There are literally threats being made. We need to set an example for the future generations. And if we want to see them using the ice at all, really. I do want to highlight a personal bias here to provide transparency to voters. In my opinion, groups that are the bedrock of our community and have held the same time for many, many years and paid into our existing facilities and brought life into them, as well as their members continue to help out other user groups via training and volunteering, I personally don't feel those groups should have to move to other days in a schedule. Maybe possibly budging a half hour here or there. These are the little details we have to bring to the table. And if elected, these are the details I'll have to model through with the other council members, user groups, and township staff. In the medium and long term, likely 15 years, the answer is more ice time in the form of a new rink. 
I've heard from many residents and user groups that a double pad on Centerline Smith is the answer. I honestly don't know if this is the answer or location. What I do know is we need more research, consultation with residents, and a plan before this can be moved on. Honestly, the preliminary logistics do paint a pretty and convincing picture. Theoretically, we start with a plan for one with the second pad written into the long-term plans, kind of similar to what we've seen unfold in Millbrook. With condensed and suburb-like development expanding close by in Peterborough and Lakefield, this could be a great leverage for cost-sharing partnerships with the province and federal level in building more community facilities that really go along with the homes that they want to see built in our communities and the increase in the populations they want to see in our communities. Here too, there's always the possibility of trying to find a private partner, those who specialize in ICE facility and organization. But here we have to be really careful with such a partnership because once the theoretical facility is up and running, we have to ensure that our user groups have the first claim to that ICE and that others who have less stake come second. So long-term contracts would have to be put into place and that can be risky. That may seem unfair to outside residents as well, but right now, that's my position. Consider right now, Smith Ward doesn't have ice available, unless you count the lakes freezing in the winter. So with this approach, Smith would finally get a facility and it would benefit the other wards and their residents because it would be at the center of the township, closer to the city of Peterborough. And there's a long-term potential to tap into Peterborough's water infrastructure, which we don't have in Smith or Ennismore. But this would depend on the rate at which the province allows for development to bleed into the borders of our township. Here's my two cents again, and take it or leave it, it's just what I've been muddling over as I chat with residents and user groups. And there's a few details here to consider. In the long term, we have three full working pads. We convert Lakefield's ice rink into a community centre with amenities that we cannot provide at the other locations, such as convertible or multi-use surfaces for year-round indoor activities like soccer, tennis, badminton, lacrosse, maybe even a gym and rock climbing, just to name a few. There are many sport and activity groups outside of our township who are looking for more space and unique facilities and time slots to operate and we could make money off of them. This would help offset the long and short-term costs associated with developing the rink. Not a vast amount, but an ongoing contribution. And really this could help limit the impact of the day-to-day -day costs that we see trickling down to the bottom lines of our tax bills. Further, Lakefield's ice groups and their numbers are not growing. And there are rumors that due to the declining numbers and the increased costs to run those groups, some may fold sooner than later. This means the participants who make up those groups will likely come to Ennismore's user groups. However, even if we can take Lakefield's arena and use their ice time, we still don't have enough ice time. Therefore, realistically, while Lakefield has been recently updated, and those updates are focused on accessibility metrics and not the ice pad features, unlike Ennismore's where we have updated the ice pad, moved to larger changing rooms and washrooms and improved the overall accessibility and meeting space immensely, comparatively, it makes more sense to convert Lakefield than Ennismore. At this point in time, there's no clear cut or easy short-term solution. Our population is likely to continue growing at a fast pace, and if we want our children and grandchildren to enjoy these comforts, opportunities, and the activities that we have had, we have to make those decisions now, and it's going to cost us in one way or another, either directly paying through user fee groups or on our tax bills over time. Like I said in my last video, Selwyn is already a leader in the county of Peterborough, and with the development challenges that we are facing, the new council has to be well-versed in the community's needs across all ages and stages of life and be ready to dig our heels in to make those hard decisions to improve the quality of life for everyone in our township. We've already been dealing with this issue for too long. Our next council has to act on it. As a candidate for Ennismore Ward Council position, I'm putting my name forward as a young, innovative, community-connected, and well-educated individual who wants to see the best for everyone in our township. Voting in Selwyn Township's 2022 municipal election is open October 11th to 24th, and once you receive your personalized pin in the mail, you can vote online or by phone. Let's be proactive and shape the progress we want to see. Vote Mary Coolis for Ennismore Ward Councillor. Thanks for watching. I hope this information has been helpful. Did you like the content? Over the course of my campaign, I'll be releasing more short videos diving into the important facets of municipal government and politics in our township. The goal is to educate others, make municipal politics more engaging, and promote my campaign ahead of the 2022 Selwyn Township election. 
Want to know more about what I have to offer? Add a comment. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to make others aware.